Hey guys, it's Jonathan from Set Sail. You guys have read the title, you know what this is about. Let's jump into it. Tip number one, organize your clips with folders and colors. So before you drag your entire SD card straight into Premiere, take a bit of time just to create some folders and then when you import those folders into Premiere, they will all be nicely categorized. You can even go and open those folders and set each of those clips as their own color, which means when you have them in the timeline, they'll be so much easier to figure out which is which. Tip number two, make use of the source monitor. I see so many people dropping clips straight onto their timeline and having to cut things down or take the audio out and all of that stuff. You can save a lot of time by dragging your clips into the source monitor and setting your in and out points. You do that with the I and the O key. If you only want the video, just drag the video icon. If you only want the audio, just drag the audio icon. And you can even collect these in your project bin so that you can create multiple crops out of your one video clip and that will make it easier to bring your footage in later on. Number three, ripple trim. This is an editing tool that I use all the time. It's pretty much the main way that I edit videos these days. So when you have your clip and let's say you want to take out a little section in the middle, first of all, you're going to hit C. That's going to bring up your razor tool and you can use that to cut the clip that you want to make an edit with. And if you hold shift and hit C, it will also cut the entire timeline, so audio and everything. So maybe you get to the end of a sentence, you want to put a cut there with the C tool, and then you scroll through and find the next piece of audio that you want to bring to that point. Now rather than having to like scroll, make a cut, delete that, or like drag the crop thing along and move everything, just hit the letter Q. Just move your timeline to that point, hit the letter Q, and it will cut everything up until your last cut point. Similarly, if you want to do it the other way around, you can use W and that will cut everything ahead of that until the next cut point. Once you got those shortcuts down, you'll be speeding your way through edits like crazy, speedy people. Now sometimes you're gonna hit that and it's gonna take out some of your audio track, for example. Maybe you've got some background music going on. If you don't want it to do that, that leads us to tip number four, lock layers. If you just hit that little padlock, that layer's not going anywhere, so you can make cuts your audio track will stay just where it is. That's it, that's the tip. Number five, cover your cuts with B-roll. This isn't necessarily a time saver, but it is something that will improve your overall edit. We've all seen those YouTube videos with cuts on every few words, and it's very youtube -y style, but very like hard to keep track of and a little bit crazy, right? You don't wanna be doing all of that. A nice way to cover over those edit points is to just use some B-roll footage over that point where you've got a transition in text. And that way you can be speaking, you can bring in another piece of footage, come back to the person speaking, and no one even knows that you did a cut in the middle of that. Tip number six, shifting the timeline, okay? We've all had those mo moints. I was combining points and moments there. We've all had those moments where you realize, oh, hang on, I had a whole different scene I wanted to put in here, I need to move this whole section. And you start zooming out and holding shift and collecting all of these clips and like trying to move them, and then you missed one and you overwrite it by accident. Not anymore, guys. There's a little thing called the Track Select Forward Tool, and if you press and hold, it will also show you the Track Select Backward Tool, or you can just use A or Shift and A, and basically, whatever clip you click on, it will select everything from that point onwards, so you can shift the entire timeline up, and so you can insert another piece of footage there, or whatever you want to do. Same way with backwards, and of course, if you want to do that without moving your music, just remember to lock that layer. Now for another bonus tip inside of this tip, 6B we'll call it, if you get a little clip that you want to insert and you want to shift things along, you can just hold command, drop it in there, it will nudge everything over. Just like that. I know. Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. There are classes on there for everyone from beginners to pros, covering video, design, marketing, productivity, and so much more. And seeing as we're talking about video editing today, I can highly recommend Skillshare's video classes. When we started to make the creator series on this channel, I sat down to take the creator short documentary video portrait class by Elaine McMillian Sheldon. And honestly, I still use these things I learned in that class in almost every episode that we make. So for a limited time, you can unlock your creativity with a free trial of Skillshare's premium membership, and after that trial, a yearly membership is less than $10 a month. So if you're interested, click the link in the description and thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Number seven, align your audio. One of the biggest headaches when you're editing can be, say you're recording with an external microphone, for example, and you wanna match that audio up with your video audio and you're like looking at the waveform and trying to match it all up. If you start off your take with a clap, you get a little spike in audio that you can use to line up your video and audio together 
one of the reasons they use those clapboard things in films. Fact of the day. If you want to get real fancy with this, there is a feature in Premiere that is a multicam setup. So let's say you have maybe two cameras going on, you are speaking with two different angles, and you can select that footage, bring it into Premiere, use their multicam feature. And you can even automatically align the footage by audio and it will go in and look at the audio of both clips, make sure they line up properly, and then to edit you can simply click on the camera that you want while you're playing through and it's almost like a live vision mixing kind of way of editing. Now you can go back and make adjustments to those clips but it's a really good way to get started on a multi-cam editing setup. Number eight, smooth out your transitions. So pretty much any value of a clip in Premiere, whether it's your position or scale or opacity or any of that stuff, it can be controlled by keyframes, right? You can set a keyframe at this position, another one at this position, and it will move between the two. Now, what about if you want to create that kind of smooth, speeding up, slowing down effect? Well, personally, I find that the ease keyframes thing is pretty subtle and it doesn't really make a huge noticeable difference. And I like to do things a little bit more extreme with a kind of swishy thing going on. So to do that, you're going to select those keyframes drop down the little arrow thing and you bring up this graph editor and you're going to use these Bezier tools. Anyone that's familiar with like the pen tool in Illustrator or Photoshop will be kind of familiar with this, but you're looking at a graph of like velocity. You know, if it's something I want to move smoothly from here to here, then I'm going to start it with zero velocity. It's going to ramp up to fast and then it's going to slow back down again. And now we get a nice swishy, zoomy, smooth transition. There you go. Number nine, exporting for screen sizes. Did you know that Premiere just recently added a feature where when you're saving out your video and you want to maybe share it across social media, you've got a nice widescreen video, but you also want to put it on an Instagram story. You also want to share it on an Instagram post. Maybe that's going to be square or like four by five. Rather than just cropping your video, which is probably going to give somebody like half a face or cut out some important information, Premiere actually has some tools to help you automatically line up the video where it thinks it should be. And that means that you can crop it down. Premiere will take a pretty good guess at what information should be saved and it will start to shift your clips over so you can automatically save out all these different things nicely cropped so you're not losing information in the cropping phase. And finally, number 10. Um, save graphics that you're using on a regular basis. So on our channel, we have the Set Sail intro logo. We have our end card. We have little graphics that pop up every now and then. I have all of these saved out as MP4s. It's got the white logo on a black background and I can just knock it out using the blending tool and I can drop that onto any video we make. And if you want to take it to the next level, there is a whole thing called Essential Graphics that came into the Creative Cloud suite very recently. And you can even create titles in After Effects with editable features such as changing the text that's in there or changing the color of something or changing the width of something. Um, I will post a link in the description to a whole video on this that somebody else has done because it would be too long to explain in this whole video. It would be a video in itself. But by creating these templates, you're able to just drop on little titles, save so much time in having to recreate the same titles or the same effects over and over again. Common ones that we use are swipe transitions, and I also have these opening box things. If you've seen our process videos where we unpack the process of different songs, these effects are all over the place and it would take me so long if these were not saved as essential graphics. So huge time saver if you're making these kind of videos. So there we go guys, those are my 10 tips for speeding up your editing in Adobe Premiere. Hopefully there's some stuff you learned in there. I know some of these are very beginner, but some of them, as simple as they were, I did not know for years and they've really helped me in my editing. So I hope they help you guys too. So this is a very simple practical video today uh, as a little channel update. We are working on a whole series of the process which we've been releasing episodes every now and then. We've done one with Laity, one with Tamil, and we have four more episodes on the way with artists who you will find out. So keep an eye out for those. We're really excited about them and uh, we'll be sharing some practical, simple how-to videos in between just sprinkled throughout the channel. So have a good one guys. We'll see you in another video very soon.